what can we learn about human nature, the human mind, uh, from the victims of genocide? So Viktor Frankl talked about the ability to discover meaning and beauty, even in suffering. Is there something to be said about, you know, in your studying of genocide that you've learned about human nature? Well, again, I, I don't, I have to say, I come out of the study of genocide with a very pessimistic view of human nature. A very pessimistic view. Of human Even on nature. the victim side. Even on the victim side. I mean, the victims will eat their children. Right? Ukrainian case, they have no choice. You know, the victims will rob each other. The victims will form hierarchies within victimhood. So you see, let me give you an example. Again, I told you I was working on Maidanek. And there's, um, uh, in Maidanek, uh, at a certain point in 42, um, uh, a group of Slovak Jews were arrested and uh, sent to Maidanek. Those Slovak Jews were a group, somehow they, they, I mean, they stuck together, they were very competent, they were, um, you know, many of them were businessmen, they knew each other. And for a variety of different reasons within the camp, and again, this shows you the diversity of the camps and also, you know, these images of black and white in the camps are not very useful. They ruled the camp. I mean, they basically had all the important jobs in the camp, including jobs like beating other Jews and persecuting other Jews and persecuting other peoples, um, which they did. And this Polish guy who I mentioned to you, the, the, who wrote this memoir, hated them because of what they were doing to the Poles, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and he, you know, he's, he's incensed because aren't these supposed to be the Untermenschen, he says. And look what they're doing. They're treating us, you know, like dirt. And they do. They treat them like dirt. So, you know, in this kind of work on Maidanek, there's certainly parts of it that, you know, were inspiring. Um, you know, people helping each other, people trying to feed each other, people giving warmth to each other. Uh, you know, there's some very heroic uh, Polish women who end up having a radio show called Radio Maidanek, which they put on every night in the women's camp, mm -hmm. which is, you know, to raise people's spirits. And they, you know, sing songs and do all this kind of stuff, you know, to to try to keep themselves from, you know, the horrors that they're experiencing around them. And so you do see that. And you do see, you know, human beings acting... Um, in support of each other. But, you know, uh, I mean, Primo Levi is one of my favorite writers about about the Holocaust and about the camps. And, you know, I don't, I, I don't think Primo Levi saw anything, you know. I mean, he had pals, you know, who, who he helped and who helped him. I mean, it, but he describes this, this kind of, you know, terrible inhuman environment, which no one can escape, really. No one can escape. He ends up committing suicide, too, I think, because of his, his sense of, we don't know exactly why, but probably because of his sense of what happened in the camp. I mean, later he goes back to Italy, becomes a writer, and that sort of thing. So I don't, I don't especially in the concentration camps, it's really hard to find places like Vico Frankl where you can say, you know, I am moved in a positive way, you know, by what happened. Uh, there were cases, there's no question. People hung together, they tried to help each other, but, but you know, they were totally, totally caught in this, in this um, web of genocide.